Well, we're back at it. Chef Ellen and I are back in the kitchen and uh, our, our lobster crab dip, or no, our crab. Our buffalo crab dip. Buffalo crab dip, our lobster salad, mm -hmm. and it is done from the oven. And now we're, we're working with the uh, oysters. Oysters, yes. So the oyster rice we're going to do today is Oysters Kilpatrick. Sounds really fancy, but it's really simple and really delicious. This is a baked oyster. So this is a really nice one if you have... Uh, maybe some oyster newbies, because this one has bacon and cheese in it, and as we know, bacon and cheese is delicious. Yeah, it's a little fish. <laughs> yeah, it is. So for this recipe, I'm using some fresh breadcrumbs. Um, so you can even just chop up some like bread, anything like that. You want it to be a little bit. It has to be fresh, so it's going to soak up the juices from the oyster and a little bit of the bacon fat. So I've cooked off some bacon. We've saved the bacon fat here, which is important. Some more cow's aged cheddar and some parsley because a little bit of green is nice. If you don't have it, no big deal. And you know, people used to laugh at me for saving the bacon grease, but I've always had saved the bacon grease. Bacon grease is a del I love it. It's great to cook potatoes with. It's, yeah. As you said, you cooked some scallops yesterday yeah. with bacon fat. Yeah. It's amazing. So we're gonna do this oyster recipe today. So what I'm doing for the baked recipe, I've actually just put down some dried beans onto the sh onto the cooking sheet, uh, and this will help so your oysters don't flop everywhere, which is good. Uh, if you don't have that, you can just get some more foil and sort of just crunch it up a little bit, and you can sort of sit them in. But the beans are simple. That's a great idea. It keeps the juices inside the oyster. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, it's great. And so I know, because I've seen you in action at the Shellfish Festival last year, so I know you've got some shucking skills. So we're going to watch you shuck an oyster or two. And, um, and so it's really simple. And, and what we want to look at is that back notch in the oyster, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to open it from. And um, do you know how an oyster is like a tree? Well. I know. I bet you do know. I do know. Uh, the rings tell yeah. me. Eight. Yeah. So if you look on the back of your oyster, it's kind of neat. It's one of those little fun facts. You're having a uh, you know a little party. You can throw that out. Always food knowledge and trivia is good. So you can see those kind of lines. You can see five years it took to grow this beautiful oyster. So that's a lot of love that goes into making. I had to have that. Yeah, yeah. These are beautiful oysters, and they're nice and heavy for their size. So we know this is a lot of good of that oceany brine that's in there. Super important. And um, yeah. I love oysters just like that. It doesn't need anything else, but this baked recipe is pretty delicious. I like that. And of course, I got a real tough one here. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, I will switch. That one really tough. There we go. There you go. Oysters can be intimidating to a lot of people uh, when they're shucking them and stuff like that because you can, you, you, can, uh, you can damage yourself. Yeah. So you got to be careful. So one of the things I'll show one too, one of the things I like to do um, when we're doing the oyster, so if you're a little bit intimidated, so if you want to keep your hand a little bit safe, I usually like to fold, I get a napkin like this, and I'll put my the edge of the oyster kind of to the corner, Okay. and then I'll put my hand under a cloth like this. Oh yes. So yes. if you have any slips, this will keep you safe, right? So if you're a newbie, this is the way to go. Because you're doing the pro, you're doing the pro style. So, and then you can just pop it off. And the idea when you're cutting your, uh, opening your oyster, you want to go in almost like a 30 degree angle. And when you get into that notch, you're almost going to twist it like you're sharpening a pencil or starting starting your car. And then you're going to, when you hit that spot, and you just. Yeah, it pops right open. Pops right open. Yeah, yeah. And so you can see the oyster, oyster meat is stuck in the, in the shell on the top by this. And on the bottom. So we'll just swoop from both sides. All right, time to make our filling. Mm. Okay, so to this, we're going to add bacon fat. Oh, wow. So you're going to give that a stir. No, I never expected you to do that. <laughs> Full of surprises. And we're going to add in a little bit of Worcestershire sauce to give it some tang. And if you need to add a little more bacon fat to make it all come together, you can do that. 
Oh, you're, are you trying to make like a paste? Is that no, the idea? just almost or... like a stuffing. Okay. Just like okay. a dressing you'd have at Thanksgiving. This is basically that. And this is a, an actual kind of adaptation. Back in the day, uh, oysters were their classic uh, Christmas dish. This was the only time of year when it was cold, and you can actually ship them with train for the train, and they would take them all the way down the East Coast. So you have that's why in the Carolinas oyster stuffing is so popular. So this is basically how they would do that. Yep. Perfect. I was expecting to tell you something different. I was expecting you to put each ingredient on the the uh, on the oyster. Yeah. And and then go from it from there. But this is. This mixes it so well. Yep. So that looks delicious to me. And so all we have to do now is put a nice spoon on top of each of the ingredients. And then go for it. So like that much? Yeah. Well, you might, I might, I would probably just go with my hands. Okay. And just so make sure you cover up that oyster meat. That's really important. Just like that. If you want to keep it. And again, I like to do, as I said, recipes that you're going to play with your food. That's really important. And if you want, you can add dill to this or some lemon zest if you like, or a little lemon juice. It's up to you. Uh, you can play around with this recipe to add in your little twists. If you want to put some garlic in there, you can. We got lots of garlic in our salad, and, and so I thought we'll just keep these nice bacon cheese. And what happens, all those beautiful juices from the oysters will mix with the breadcrumbs in it. It's just it's awesome stuff. And so you can make this for as many people as you want and just pop them in the oven or you can even put them in the barbecue. So if you do them on the barbecue, one side of your barbecue is off and one is on high and on the side that is on that's off, that's where you put these. Put the lid down for about seven minutes. Perfect. Right off the barbecue. Nice, so how do you do them in the oven? How so we're going to put them at 425 for about seven minutes. Hmm. And again, we're just looking for golden bubbly. You'll smell that bacon and cheese, and we're ready to eat. A little fan back. <laughs> the beans is a really neat idea. Yeah. Because that's that's one thing I'm always struggling with when you do oysters. I, I put them on a pan. Yeah. And and uh, use a tin foil so they don't make a mess on the bottom of the pan. But the juice is always running out of them, and then they become dry. Yeah. This way here, then they're going to stay. They're going to stay more. That's pretty slick. I yeah. Like that. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Awesome. So we'll just wait for those to come out and we'll clean up and back at it again. Back at it. Well, <laughs> thanks very much. We'll uh, we'll we'll chat back in a minute. Okay.